Hi, I'm back to do a follow-up video on my last one. So please, please do go look at that seven minutes on me basically saying, please don't go to your child's invalid wedding, um, especially do not host your child's invalid wedding. And I wanna talk about some of the objections that have come up and how we can reason those out because this is just too important to, to, to let it drop and say, let's just agree to disagree. You go back to this. If, if we're talking about an invalid marriage, which is a Catholic who is getting married outside the church without a dispensation from the bishop, it's an invalid marriage. It amounts to fornication. It amounts to adultery if one of them had been married before without annulment. And so these are very serious, very serious sins that we call, or Thomas Aquinas would call without too many caveats, we call it a mortal sin. That's, what, that's the way we used to talk as Catholics. Um, I'll do another video on what constitutes a mortal sin and why so many people say that I apparently don't know what a mortal sin is. I'll go over that. It's, it's, it's actually not that difficult and we need to not be legalistic on this. What is the principle? Those of us who are faithful, and we try to stay faithful to God, we try, number one, we're not going to offend God. That's our first principle. We do not offend God. We do not do this thing if it's going to offend God. Then we've made our decision. So if people say, well, I don't know, I'm going to discern this hosting this this non-wedding, this, my child is in deep sin and I'm going to host it. I'm going to host this occasion. What is the principle behind that? Where are you getting that? And a lot of times I hear, well, it's, ch it's charity. It's like, well, but then you could say, okay, breaking the bonds of charity. We never want to break the bonds of charity under normal circumstances, but when it comes to deadly sin, we do not apply that principle because we, our own souls, we cannot break our relationship with Christ by doing something immoral and hosting something immoral in order to placate or go along with a deadly sin. So we can't use the argument, well, not breaking the bonds of charity is enough for me to host this wedding or be there. That, that, that We can't lose our own soul in the process. Now, there's this whole big theory that, well, but the church, the church leaves it up to us, prudential judgment, um, discernment. I'm, gonna, I'm asking the question, honestly, where does the church say this? Where does the church say this? We know that in the past, the church said, absolutely not. You may never go to these weddings. In fact, the church was so strict, it would even be like, you can't even go to a Protestant wedding or, you know, or any of these things. But when can you go to a Catholic's invalid marriage? The church has never been okay with that in the history of all of Christian tradition. It just doesn't happen. So where did this tradition or this understanding that we had, where, where did that suddenly change? Officially, where do we see it? It's not in canon law. And that's what they say. Well, it's not in canon law. Well, but that doesn't mean you can do something just because it isn't explicitly changed in canon law, which you've never been allowed to do before. So that doesn't cut it. That doesn't make sense just because it says, um, you know, I mean, does it say in canon law, uh, you can't accompany your daughter who is becoming a voodoo priestess in a ceremony? Well, no, it's probably not explicit in canon law, but we know that we are unable, we're not even permitted to commit venial sin in the scheme of moral law much less accompany and witness and celebrate uh, mortal sin, a deadly sin of our child. So, so th that, that part doesn't even make sense. Someone would have to show me how, where, when this understanding of, of church um, teaching happened. Where did it happen? I know people say, well, good priests, good priests say that we can't. And I would like to, again, I'd like to know where did these good priests get this new sentiment that you're allowed to do this? Where did this come from? I'm, I'm honestly asking. I, I've been searching for it. I don't see it. Who said? Um, and good priests are wrong on many things. There are many good priests that we know who will counsel for divorce, who will counsel for remarriage, uh, you know, annulment, and, and moving on. So divorce, annul, and move on is very, very prevalent among even very good priests. Uh, it used to be that... It, Good priests would say, well, if your conscience says you can use contraception, you can use contraception. And people still use that today. Well, good priests, you know, I had a good priest tell me that. or I had. So I don't want to hear what a priest's opinion is. I want to know where this came from, where this novel idea came from. Okay. Um, 
there are, I've heard that, you know, it's like the prodigal son. Well, we have to keep mercy open. Well, I'm not ever saying to disconnect from your child completely. I'm saying don't go to the sinful event. Don't go. Don't, don't host it for sure. Uh, I don't even think that's even allowed. Actually, I think that is one of those things that's not allowed. You can't witness or stand up for these things. You know, the, the gray area is can we attend? But here we have people hosting. We have people uh, paying for it, um, you know, being in the wedding party. I don't, I don't even think that's even, even in the gray area. So the prodigal son thing is, well, the prodigal father said, goodbye. I love you. I miss you. And, and let him go. And then the prodigal son came back and the prodigal son repented and there was a, a, and the mercy was always there. So I'm even saying less than that drama, you know, less than that. Just don't go to the event. You don't have to cut relations with your child. Just don't go to a sinful event. You wouldn't go to a divorce party. You wouldn't go to a drug party. You wouldn't go to a voodoo witch ordination if your child was having that. Why would you be going to an invalid marriage, which amounts to fornication and amounts to putting their souls in peril and every guest and, and you and everyone else there because they shouldn't be there. It's, it's, it's an immoral event. Um, so then some people say, well, it's, you know, we're not celebrating. And we, that, that becomes difficult to understand if you're getting your hair done, getting your nails done, buying a dress. Um, you can't say, oh, I'm not celebrating when you put pictures up on Facebook or in public areas and talk about the celebration of this, this wedding. And as one priest told me, you know, you can't, say, oh, I'm so aggrieved, now let's do the chicken dance. You just It doesn't make any sense. We know this. We know that if there's a photographer there and they're, you're paying a photographer and there's gifts and feasting and, and fun and witnessing, we know that the grief isn't really there. And if it is there, as I said, I would feel like I'd want to vomit the entire time watching my child do something so, so deadly sinful. It is just egregious. So... It, to be there with a photographer smiling, I mean, you have to really have such co a cogn cognitive dissonance that to get through this day. And you certainly wouldn't put it on Facebook. And, and so we're having a disconnect here about something. And I, I'm trying to figure out if it's just marriage that's the issue because Satan is after marriage, after marriage. So, um, you know, the idea that we have all these Catholic divorces, annulments, and moving on, and now we have this where it's like, well, there's invalid marriages, but we're going to go. Why is it always marriage? Because I don't think that we would go to an invalid ordination. I don't think that we would go if, um, if we knew that an ordination was to some weird invalid thing. You know, we wouldn't do that, but we do when it's wedding. And I don't know if it's just that we like weddings. I'm, not, I'm just really not sure. But these aren't weddings, so let's be really clear about that. Um, so then there's one more thing I, I guess I should mention is a lot of people really do fear. They fear that their child is going to commit suicide. Um, that fear or the fear that the child won't love them anymore, that fear uh, is real. And I have, I have sympathy for that. But we cannot base any moral act or any of our acts based on fear. That is, that is what Satan wants. He wants us to act upon our fears instead of doing the right thing. And so... Um, you know, even with the transgender stuff, the reason that the courts now will take kids away from their parents is because they say, you're harming this child because this child's going to commit suicide if you don't go along with it. You're, you're harming the mental health of this issue. So you see how this fear of suicide, this fear of death is what is making parents do things that they normally would not do. So we have to not operate from fear. We have to not spend, you know, our, you know, all these months and years discerning whether or not we're going to go to a child's uh, immoral event. We just say from the beginning, anything you do that's immoral, I'm not going to celebrate it. I'm not going to be there. I love you dearly. I just won't do it. And um, to the degree that we are wishy-washy on that or trying to make, to make it sound like, um, like there are options that are open to us, Again, show me where that is other than a priest's opinion. Show me that connected to any Catholic tradition about immoral acts. Uh, uh, the last thing I'll say is that um, people will say Jesus dined with sinners. There's nothing immoral about dining with sinners. There's nothing. I dined with sinners. People dined with me when I was a mortal sinner. You can dine with sinners day and night. You can go uh, to the movies with sinners. You can do anything you want with sinners except sin. 
You cannot sin with them. So what Christ did was not sin with them. He did not celebrate their sin. He did not take a picture at their sin. Um, the idea that we can use Jesus as our model for paying for sin, hosting sin, no, no, no. If you want to host a dinner, that's great, but don't host an invalid wedding, okay? If you want to host um, a birthday party, great, but don't host an immoral event. Don't use Jesus in this. There's no comparison. There's, there's nothing there that makes any kind of analogy to what Jesus did to standing up for witnessing, celebrating, dancing, feasting, receiving gifts, um, receiving guests uh, in, in something that is deadly sinful. Deadly sinful. There's no comparison. So please don't bring Jesus into this. Um, anyway, all right. Next time we're going to talk about hopefully what is mortal sin because I've been accused of not knowing what mortal sin is. And we're really going to dive into that because, boy, we are trying to... I, I, uh, legal, uh, we're trying to use legal, uh, legalism to define away what we already know is wrong and mortally sinful. So we need to really dive into that because that, that's unfortunately something that keeps coming up. And um, I guess we'll talk about that next time. Thanks again for listening.